Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 1676, lowest common ancestor of a binary tree 4. Let's read the question prompt. Given the root of a binary tree and an array of tree node objects, nodes, return the lowest common ancestor, LCA, of all the nodes in nodes. All the nodes will exist in the tree, and the values of the tree's nodes are unique. Extending the definition of LCA on Wikipedia, the lowest common ancestor of n nodes p1, p2, dot 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 pn in a binary tree t is the lowest node that has every pi as a descendant, where we will allow a node to be a descendant of itself for every valid i. <clears throat> a, val a descendant of a node x is a node y that is on the path from node x to some leaf node. So if we look at our example, and we're given this binary tree here, and we have the nodes given to us 7, 6, 2, 4, we should return 5. Why? So, as we can see, you know, we have our node 2. Whoops, let me use a different color here. It's a little bit easier to see. Um, okay, one second. Okay, so if we, you know, we have 6, 2, 4, 7, and the first point where they all converge is going to be at this 5. So this is why 5 is the LCA. So this problem may seem complicated because now we're given a list of nodes, but in reality, the fact that all the nodes exist in the tree makes this problem extremely easy. Uh, essentially, it's gonna be a carbon copy of how we solved lowest common ancestor of a binary tree one, um, where now instead of checking whether our current node basically equals to P or Q, we just have to check if the current node that we're processing is in this list of nodes. And if it is, then we can return true, uh, you know, to the next level. So for example, <clears throat> you know, we're still gonna do the DFS in the same way, right? We're gonna start at the root and we're gonna say, okay, you know, um, you know, does this node, is it in nodes here? Okay, no, it's not. So we need to go into its left trees. So we're actually going to get to the five here. And because the five is, um, well, it's actually not in here, sorry. So, you know, we check, okay, is five in nodes? No, it's not. So that means we need to go into its left subtree and right subtree. So we're going to go into its left. So we're going to be at the six. Is six in nodes? Yes, it is. So that means that we can return six to the five. And then, you know, we go into its right subtree, we see, okay, is two in here? Um, yes, it is. So that means that we can return the two. We don't even have to go any further, uh, which is quite nice because in, I think, lowest common ancestor, you know, version two, we had to make sure that P and Q were in the tree. This time, we know that they're in the tree, so we don't even have to go any further. As soon as we find a node that's in our nodes here, we can actually just return that node to its parent. So this, uh, the five will receive six and two. And since it received you know, two non-null uh, from its left and its right, we can simply return five here. And then what we wanna do is now we're gonna go into three's right subtree. So we go to its right, we're at this one. Is it in nodes? No, it's not. So, okay, let's go to its left subtree. Uh, is zero in its nodes? No, it's not. Uh, and then we try to go to its left and right. Obviously, they don't exist. So this would simply return none. And then, you know, we go to the right subtree, is eight in nodes? No, it's not, okay. Um, we go to its left, we go to its right, obviously they're null, so nothing to return there. So we're simply gonna return none here. And then, you know, since we have none here, we can only return none. And then from the three, you know, our global kind of recursion will spit out, you know, five here because it's the, you know, the non-null uh, element that it received here. Um, from both the left and the right. So five would actually be our LCA. So that's how we got it. Um, like I said, solving this question is extremely straightforward. All we need to do is do the same algorithm we used for LCA of a binary tree one, except this time, instead of checking whether you know the node is equal to P or Q, all we have to do is check if the current node is in our nodes here. And if it is, then we can return it and we're gonna do the exact same processing as we did in LCA one. Uh, and the reason for this is because we're guaranteed that the nodes will exist in the tree. So we don't have to worry about things not being there, uh, which is really convenient and makes this problem a carbon copy of, um, you know, the first iteration of the problem. I don't know why Leak Code created this problem because it's really like, it's, it's the exact same thing. Um, so anyway, let's write the code and we can see how it's implemented. I'll see you in the editor. We're back in the editor. Now let's write the code. Recall that I mentioned that when we're doing our processing, we wanna check 
whether or not the current node that we're at is in our you know nodes here that were provided now notice that nodes is given to us as a list of tree nodes and you should know by now that doing any sort of lookup inside of a list is going to be a big o of n operation which we don't want to do because it's slow we want to do the lookup in constant time so the re uh, to combat this what we're going to do is we're actually going to say nodes we're going to transform it into a set so that way we can do a constant time lookup to see if a node exists in nodes we don't want to be doing a big O of n operation every time because that's going to make our runtime complexity big O of n squared, which we don't want to do. So now what we can do is write our DFS function. It's going to be basically a carbon copy of, you know, lowest common ancestor of a binary tree one. So we're going to say def DFS and, you know, we're going to take in a node and we're going to say, OK, well, you know, our node has to be non null for us to do any sort of processing and checks on it. So let's make sure that we actually have a non null node. So we're going to say if not node, we can simply return none. There's nothing we can do here if the node that we have is null. So now what we want to do is we want to make the check of whether our current node is in nodes. If it is, then we don't even have to check the children because we can just return the node. And the reason that we can do this is because we are told that, uh, where is it? Um, all the nodes exist in the tree. So if one exists, we don't have to check the bottom ones, um, which is quite nice. So let's say if node in nodes, oops, we can simply return the node, which is nice. Otherwise, now we have to go into its left and right subtree to figure out whether or not uh, the current node is an LCA. So let's do that. We'll say left equals DFS and we'll go into node.left and we'll say right equals DFS um, node.right. Oops. Uh, okay. Now, if both left and right are not none, then we know that the current node is our LCA. And this is basically following the same pattern that we had in lowest common ancestor one. So we're going to say if L and R, then we know that our current node is the LCA. Otherwise, we just want to return L or R. So whichever one is non null, if they're both null, then obviously it'll just return null to the next level. But if one of them is not null, then it would return the, the one that is defined. And that's our DFS function. All we have to do now is literally just return DFS, calling it on the root, and we should have solved this problem. So let's make sure um, our submission works here. Submit it, and there we go. So we've solved it. Before we go, let's touch on the time and space complexity. So the first thing that we do is notice that we transform our nodes from a list to a set. So this operation is going to cost big O of n time because we have to um, you know, basically go through the entire thing and transform it into a set. Then this DFS, you know, we could potentially have to traverse the entirety of the tree. Uh, in the case that, you know, the the two nodes that uh, that were, you know, we could be given a list of nodes, which is only length one, or maybe it's length two. And, you know, those would be the last two nodes in a tree that was like very heavily skewed. So if it was just like left, um, subtrees or just right subtrees, we would have to go to the very bottom in the worst case, uh, if those were, you know, the two nodes that we were looking for. So in that case, because of that, our worst time complexity is going to be big O of N for the actual DFS function here, which means that, you know, this is going to be big O of two N, which asymptotically is just big O of N. So this is a linear solution space. Um, because we have to transform our nodes into a set, this is going to cost big O of N. And then for the actual recursion, if we're counting the stack space, then, you know, it's going to cost big O of N, uh, space because we have to recurse potentially through, you know, the entire tree here in the case that it's heavily skewed and it's just left subtrees or just right subtrees. Uh, so it's going to be big O of N. Um, or it could be constant if we don't want to count the recursive stack. You know, that's something that you ask your interviewer, okay, do you want to count this? If not, it doesn't actually change the time complexity of our algorithm. It's still going to be, oh, sorry, the space complexity. It's still going to be big O of N on the space. And there's nothing we can do about that. You know, we have to do this, um, 
this set transformation here. And the reason we knew that is because if not, you know, we would be doing a big O of N operation here for this if node and nodes every time. And that would take our runtime complexity to actually big O of N squared, which is a lot worse than big O of N. So that's the reason why we have to pay this space um, complexity cost in order to get the set so that's how you solve this problem again this is super simple um, i don't know why this problem exists this is like a carbon copy of you know the first iteration of the lowest common ancestor problem um i guess just leak code needed more problems or something but yeah it's it's essentially a carbon copy the only difference here is that you just check if node is in nodes except for other than you know uh whereas in the first question it was like does it equal to the node p or q that you were given Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what other videos you want to see. I'm more than happy to, you know, make videos for you guys. Just tell me what you want to see. I'll try to solve the problems, come up with a nice solution, uh, and try to explain it in a way that makes sense for you guys. So let me know what you want to see. I'll be happy to do that for you. And in the meantime, happy elite coding.